Okay. Just for a minute here, before I get in showing you about the roof, I wanted to go over to make sure that you DIY guys understand exactly what I'm doing. Because this is one of, absolutely one of the most critical and dangerous parts of doing this because you got a water jacket right on top. I want you to give me some new chalk tomorrow. Right, right on top right here. Now, let me see if I can get this right for you because I tried to explain it and everything. I, I try to do good. and I know I get kicked on a lot for sounding like a hick and get a lot of comments on it, but I do the best I can to show y'all in my terms where I would understand it. Sorry about the cigarette, you know I'm smokers. Okay. Basically what I did, this is looking at the bowl, okay, in the garden. It had a lot of meat that closed up this area right here. So I chopped off a good bit, I'd say probably 60 to maybe 100 thousandths and brought that arrow point to there. Now, on this side, okay, if you will, it greatly got worked. The straight wall side, I didn't move that much wide, but here I did getting that cylinder to come in here. But my porting tool, that's my porting tool, and that's the burp. Getting that to go between there, you remember it wouldn't fit. So what it done was, it dug into that wall and chewed it out and brought that wall over. I let it move this part of the wall over and it's just, it's measurements that I've done over time. There actually is a tool that I use for doing this, which um, one day when I produce the video I'm, that I'm going to do to to really give you the math on it, it'll explain it, but just follow me right now. By using that pressure, I'm going to dig approximately 100 thousandths over this way, or about, it's dug that trench. Then after that's dug, I take this tool and I'm going to trim this here over to there. This, that's going to be my final measurement. Okay, now... This made a tremendous difference because remember, this is the push rod side of the wall. So if, if you had a P-top tube and you was on a flow bench, what you would see when you was measuring it would be a great restriction right here. And by going in there, chewing that up, moving that over and straighten that out, your mid and high lift flow numbers are dramatically increased. Okay? So we know that, but like I said, there was more than just width. Now this is your height view. Let me show you what happened here that really made this a sweet deal. We know I increased the width here and here. This on the guide, this on the wall and the guide. But now look at this. I took this and I started digging here and brought it up about a hundred thousandths. Now, that's as far as I got. What I'm fixing to show you now that I'm going to do by going in there and chopping with that uh, burr. Golly, I hope I get this right. Okay, by going in there, I'm going to dig. And, I, and I'm playing like connect the dots, okay? And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to start digging and I'm going to bring this back. Now, would I bring it back all the way? Absolutely not because there's there's a shape to it. Where I'm going to bring it into, I'm not going to get into that, but I am going to chop it, bring it back, and let's just say I adjusted it to right there. Okay? Well, we know that the push rod right here has got X for width. Uh, that number is going to be a, a variable depending on what RPM and cubic inch motor you got. That push rod width, that X number is going to have a cross-sectional area with it. Now, that is known as a pinch point. Here's your other pinch point. So there's two pinch points. Push rod and short turn. By cutting that, dipping it, bringing it in right there, I just went in there and opened that up and wham, solved the pinch point. 
But now here's where it gets tricky. There's a measurement of this pinch point to this pinch point. Number one rule, you really don't want but one pinch point, which is what I'm trying to do with this roof. I'm making it the push rod. I don't want to, it'd be like going 100 miles an hour, hitting the brakes, and then pulling back and going 100 miles an hour, hitting the brakes again, then going around the turn. That's what happens when, basically when you got two pinch points. But by going in here and digging that out, changing that, I've eliminated that as a pinch point, and I got it mainly right here. The only danger is right here, guess what's right there? Water. And when something's had many years of erosion and antifreeze run to it, you're really playing with fire. And just, I cannot tell you how many times I busted. That's why I become very proficient in cast iron welding. It's because when I bust through, I can go in there and weld them up with my spray torch. Uh, don't do a lot of that anymore. I got I got one or two jobs left that I'm fixing to show you. One on a big block Chevrolet head is going to be an incredible weld where the chamber's busted. Anyway, I don't mean to get side drifted, but um, that's what we're going to do right now. You're fixing to see me chop the guide, and I'm going to get you as close in there with the camera so you can see how I take the cylinder, go straight across, make my trench. I'm going to estimate... Looking at what I've already dug and what I'm going to try to keep it at, I'm going to say 125 thousandths, but I'm going to raise the roof and somewhere between here and somewhere between there to make that shape work with this shape right there. You know, you can't go all the way back unless I was going to weld the material on the floor and tilt the runner's axis. Okay, I just wanted to try. I hope y'all are getting this and understanding that not only did I dig width right there with them cylinders and trim the guide, I used that effort to dig me a trench to come up, raise the roof, and pull that back to take the pinch point out here and put the pinch point where we've only got one right there at that push rod. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up and let you watch me go in there and raise the roof. Uh, one of the bad things about this is it's very time consuming because man you can't go fast you got to go slow it's kind of like sculpting or picking at a, 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 a block of ice you can just shave a little bit at a time just a little bit at a time because you start going in there and trying to take too much too quick pow you're going to bust the other thing I wanted to show you while we were right here I'm going to show you that real quick is that and I went over this a bunch, so I'm probably repeating myself, but I, I keep wanting to tell you guys, each time I do a mod, just like first I trim that guide, I've done that eight times. Now I'm going to do the next mod, which is right here. I'll do that eight times. Each time that you do a mod, you do that single individual mod. You don't say, well, I've got this done now, I'm going to go to this. It's, because if you do that, here's what's going to happen. You're going to lose consistency. When I get through with this, rough cut, dialing them what I want, you'd be surprised, shocked, at how close the CC volumes are going to be without me even putting any math to it. That's 25 years of experience. That's what you get when you do it all the time. But even though I've done it a lot, I know I'm not going to be the same. So now we get into what I've discussed, pickup points. I'm going to come in here and... Uh, I'm going to make a pickup point probably there, probably there, probably there, probably there. But what I'm going to have is about five pickup points. Your money that you pay in cylinder head porting, as far as time and hours, that is a major role. In other words, the amount of pickup point tells the amount of precision that the cylinder head man or the porter is getting port to port. All right, if I only had to measure two spots and I set my snap gauge or my um, split calipers however I want it, well, it's going to be easy and it won't take me long to go, okay, I'm measuring these two spots. But you start going in there measuring five or six different spots and having to adjust them and get them all up and down and pull the CC, yes, it's going to make a better head. Yes, it's going to be consistent. Yes, it's going to take a lot more time and then the price goes up. 
So I kind of draw a line in between there, and that's when we get into the polishing thing. Y'all know how much I, I don't like to do it, and it's not because I, I'm lazy or because I don't want to do it. It's actually, I'm trying to give y'all a better product because I'd rather put my time on pickup points and raw material removal that's going to make a difference when you slam the gas rather than going in there making it pretty when you get to head. Ooh, so pretty, so pretty. You know, it looked good and bolted on in. Don't do shit. So, so that's what I try to do is give you pickup points. So what do you want? Do you want polishing or pickup points? I've been doing it that way for years and years. I'm flat out with my customers, but you would be surprised at how many people and I want it polished, all the way polished. I don't care about that. And, and it's just some people are that way. They want it shiny, even though they're never going to see it again. And five seconds after it starts, it's black and will run, you know. Anyway, just want to go over the discussion. Now, I'm going to go in there and trim it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay with the roof mod because we're fixing to go from roof and guide into the, the tubes. Because guess what? That one wall is right where that guide's at. So you have to split. You can get part of the roof done. Then you got to stop, and then we got to pull the tube in. And that's going to be the end of the mod on the intake port. Uh, then, you know, you're blending it all in and making it nice. Because remember, we're after velocity, airspeed, not volume. And what we're doing, these two major tricks are going to make it where with his iron manifold and his iron ram horns is going to give him the best bang for a buck. Alright, that's all on this right here. Now let's get to the nitty gritty where we're